Throughout the history of powered transport, motorsport has been at the forefront of new ideas and innovation. New tech is developed and pushed to its very limits in the heat of competition. But is that still true today? With cost caps and ever tightening regulations, is motorsport still the test bed for automotive tech that it used to be? Here at the Yas Marina circuit in Abu Dhabi, there's a new event about to take place that's doing precisely that, using racing to pioneer new tech that could have a fundamental effect both on track and on the road. Plus, there's a very healthy prize on offer of 2.25 million US dollars. Welcome to A2RL. So what is A2RL? It's the Abu Dhabi Autonomous Racing League. As a motorsport fan and a lover of cars, the word autonomous can send a little chill up my spine. We've heard about these kind of events before, but I'm told this series is different. So, Tom, thank you so much for joining us. Question number one, what is A2RL? A2RL stands for the Abu Dhabi Autonomous Racing League, which was established by our company Aspire, part of the uh, Advanced Technology Research Council here in Abu Dhabi. And the mission of the Advanced Technology Research Council is to bring about the transformation and the diversification of the economy of Abu Dhabi uh, through research and development. And the ATORL as a, is a challenge. We, we mount these big challenges where we want to solve big problems. Uh, and in big challenges, we want to bring brains from all over the world and crowdsource talent in order to help us solving big challenges. So when it comes to, to autonomous racing, it's been, you know, people have tried before, it's even fallen flat or maybe not gotten off the ground. What makes A2RL different? We're committed to the longer term. Um, we, we knew that when we started this, uh, first of all, we have a mission. We believe that autonomous technology, when properly deployed into human-driven cars, can bring about greater safety on our roads, reduce accidents, reduce fatalities. Secondly, in order to do the experimentation on the scale we're going to do it, you have to crowdsource talent from all over the world. So when we started talking to the teams last year, we said, we're having a race this year, but we guarantee both this prize pot and at least one race every year for four years. How did you find them? How did you find the people? How did you put those teams together? Our sister organization here, Technology Innovation Institute, has an advanced robotics research center and it has connections with some of the best uh, robotics and AI centers in the world. So we obviously reached out to them in the first instance. And then through our own background research, we identified where is the talent in robotics and AI throughout the world? And we opened conversations. So the first necessary condition is they could code but that wasn't a sufficient condition. They really had to know how to do it in the real world and how to apply it in extreme sports and particularly extreme sports of the quality of motor racing. Speaking of the competition, what's the structure of the race? Is it a flag to finish? Like how, how is it gonna work? What has happened before in other attempts at autonomous racing is you've done fastest lap, you've done two cars on a track together, attacking and defending, and we will have all of that. But what we're also pushing to get is to up to four cars racing together on a track. Never been done before, never had four cars on a track together before. So, you know, in terms of the each race, we need to go incrementally beyond where it's gone before. Well, speaking of speaking next year and, and the years beyond, how do you see A2RL evolving, developing, changing, and how much commitment have the, have the backers put into it? What's the, what's the future look like? So for the next four years, we're going to have a guaranteed race here in Abu Dhabi with the same prize purse. But our objective is to have three races per year in steady state. We would like the second and third races to be uh, international. So our working plan at the moment is a one on a, an iconic track in Europe and the second in Asia. So our outline plan at the moment is to have two races in 25 and by 26 to have the three races. But in addition to motor racing, A2RL is not just about motor racing. It's about autonomous mobility on land, air and sea. So we will be announcing our first autonomous drone race uh, which will be happening next year and we'll be announcing that over the weekend um, and then we hope to uh, after that also have autonomous uh, off-road buggy racing and then moving to uh, moving to autonomous water-based activity. It's always driven by a societal use case but then based on the platform of extreme sport as a way of uh, demonstrating the capability of the technology but also bringing the public in 
to see what's done. And to that end, this weekend, the public are going to be able to engage in the race here at the event where we'll have over 10,000 people joining us, but also online through a new app we've developed. If they have uh, goggles, they can actually hop into the car and have a VR experience. So there's no human driver, but a human can drive it. I love that. Yeah, and I mean, I've, I've done it, I've been in it. You have to sit down. I mean, you can actually feel the G-forces going around the corners. How much interest have you had from the wider motorsport community, but perhaps more importantly, from the automotive community? We have a conference the day after the event where we are bringing all our uh, industry partners in to talk about the future. So we're looking at the innovation cycle in motorsport and how you integrate autonomy development into that. In terms of that VR and online experience, we have uh, partners from Sony and uh, NVIDIA coming in uh, in our conference to actually discuss the future of how we can actually gamify what's happening here and, and how that can lead to not just gaming but also other sort of educational type uses, how you, how you will in the future teach uh, coding for example. And what we're going to set every year is we're going to set where, where are the open technology questions that need to be addressed, how can we use the race and how we designed the race to test that technology and demonstrate its capability, in particular for how we could get used in road, or, uh, in road transportation. So, you know, all the time it's two-handed, and that's why we call it A2RL, it's A squared. It's about sport and it's about science sitting side by side and pushing forward both the frontiers of technology development, but also its application and the acceptance by the public that this is a technology they just will not accept but demand in their cars. Essentially, what we have here is a Delara Super Formula car, albeit with a few modifications. It's called the EAV24, and its bodywork is made from biocomposite sustainable material, essentially a mix of carbon and flax, which you can grow. It's nice and strong and keeps this safe, the autonomous stack, a mix of sensors, actuators, computers, and cameras that allows this car to drive itself and be autonomous. In the middle, it's engine, a two litre turbocharged inline four, kicking out 550 horsepower, and it's linked to a six speed gearbox. It's got pushrod suspension front and rear as well as a torsion bar spring. Its brakes, Brembo calipers, carbon Brembo discs and they're electro hydraulically actuated. In each corner, Yokohama and van tyres. This is a proper race car. But how about we take a look at the autonomous stack to see what makes it drive the car itself. The car is fitted with seven 360 degree cameras and three LiDAR systems. What is LiDAR? Well, LiDAR stands for light detection and ranging. It's a remote sensing method that uses light in the form of pulsed lasers to measure variable distances between objects. These, combined with the cameras, create a data version of the environment around the car. The information is mapped and fused into an engine of perception, which gives the car a sense of where it is in relation to everything else on the track and the track itself. And also, the information is processed within the control stack, the car's brain. There are two parts to this brain, the planner and the controller. The planner decides which action to perform and passes the command to the controller. The controller is in charge of making the car move, steer, accelerate and decelerate. The competition between the teams is based on all of these systems working in optimal harmony. What about the teams? Who are they and what is their role in this event? Let's catch up with Code 19 to find out more. So first of all, um, can you tell us who you are and what your role is with the team. Yes, so I'm Lawrence Walter. I'm the team principal for Code 19 Racing. I'm from the USA. So how did Code 19 come to be? How did your team get involved in this? Well, uh, my co-founder and I, we've always been huge fans of autonomous racing since 2020. When the announcement was made that a new racing league was being formed, the Abu Dhabi Autonomous Racing League here in, uh, in the UAE, we jumped on the opportunity to, to pull a team together and and uh, come here and try and race to become world champions in autonomous racing. Of course, everybody's pumped to try and bring the trophy home at the end of the day. So you have a, it's not just you, you have a team behind you. So oh, yes. who are they and what, what are their roles? Well, just like any race team, we have all the same roles of uh, media and support, but the real core of our team is our race engineers. So we have 20 uh, engineers that are working to program the Maverick AI, and we've select, hand selected those from across industry, uh, academia, very diverse group. We have uh, five women in our team. In fact, our technical director is a woman. And so we, uh, all of those people come together uh, to program a, a Maverick to, 
to be able to compete against the best teams in the world in autonomous racing. I, mean, I do love the fact that it's called Maverick. Yes. It's, it's very suitable. Yes, and we, we try and build that into her personality, right. that she is a Maverick on the racetrack, as well as, you know, <laughs> by name. Now, when it comes to the technology, you know, sometimes as a rookie driver, you can't necessarily be as maverick as you want. But. Well, th this does lead me to my next question. What yeah. challenges have you and Maverick faced so far? Oh, so many challenges. <laughs> I mean, motorsports is the one of the most difficult things, you know, to be successful. It's and uh, there's just an incredible amount of challenges to make these machines, these amazing racing machines, go fast around a track and not crash. And so we face all the same challenges. We're just, you know, experiencing those instead of with a human race car driver with advanced AI software and all of the sensors and data that we have to do, processing all of that as we go, learning from each lap, each crash, and trying to get faster and faster every day. So that kind of leads me to yeah. my next question. This yeah. being a, a, an autonomous vehicle yes. that you guys have programmed, yes. surely the decisions it's making is based on what you have programmed into it. So if this happens, then do that. If this occurs, take this action or has it reached the point where it can react to a split second decision without you know you being in it steering yeah i mean of course our race engineers write the code but it's all based on advanced mathematics and decision algorithms and so maverick is fully autonomous yeah. when this race car is on the racetrack it takes commands from the race marshalling system and that's it so just the flags that a driver would get in traditional racing that's what maverick receives and the rest she's on her own so say something swerves in front of it, it will know exactly what to do. She, yeah, she, she sorry, Maverick, she, if something steers well, yeah, in front of her. If something her, swerves in front of Maverick, we don't want to hurt her feelings, okay? We're not. just a few days before for race day. <laughs> so no, if she, she uses all the combination of all of her advanced sensors, radar, LIDAR, cameras, INS, she fuses all of that data and then makes millisecond decisions on what the best course of action is. And so what our engineers do is write the algorithms and design the software architecture that allows her to take all that data and fuse it. And then the decision engine of what to do next, that's the secret sauce for each team. So every team is, is programming and in a different way, not all using the same methods. And uh, you know, some people take a more simple approach, some people more complex, and then we'll see on race day who's gonna win. So is Maverick, from things that happen to it, is Maverick learning off the back of that and then building it back into to what, what Maverick knows how to do? Oh yeah, every day for an autonomous race car, an AI race driver, she's learning. She's getting better and better every day, every crash, every near crash, <laughs> every scary moment for the race engineers. That We use that data uh, to, to tune her parameters, to enhance her, to update her decision engine all so that she can be better and better and more competitive on the track. And hopefully win. And definitely win, yeah. <laughs> so one more question for yes. you. Now, from an educational point of view, what have you learned? What's Code19 learned? And what have the other teams learned from developing these cars? Yeah, education is so important to us. I mean, not just for our race engineers, where we're learning every day and helping uh, Maverick get smarter, but we have supported a, a youth team as well. So as well as competing at the pro level, we do have another race car driver, Detroit AI. That's a partnership with the Boys and Girls Club from Detroit, where we have a group of uh, 14 to 17 year olds that we brought straight from Detroit to Yas Marina. And they're competing on a mini version of this to also be world champions in, uh, in, in their category. The STEM so, event on the, on the, in the fan zone on Saturday yes, night. Yes, the STEM events for fan zone Saturday night. Hopefully we can make the finals in that too. And who knows, maybe we'll have two trophies on, uh, on, on race day. A double victory. That's that would, right. That would be fantastic. Yes. Well, Lawrence, thank you so much for talking to us. Really yep. appreciate it. Really appreciate it, thanks. It's going to be really interesting to see what comes from this event. What kind of challenges are the teams going to face? How far forward will this event push autonomous technology? And will A2RL turn autonomous racing into some sort of extreme engineering sport? Well, we're going to find out in the next couple of days when the first A2RL race happens here at the Yas Marina circuit. It'll be streamed live across motorsport network sites. You can check the article for detailed timings. For now, though, we do need to address the elephant in the room, the bit about drivers. For that, let's go back to Dr. Tom. So one final one. A lot of people um, who are into motorsport, they're, they're into it because they love seeing drivers or riders push not only their machines, but themselves to the absolute limit. Some may see removing that element as kind of taking some of the magic from it. What do you have to say to that? I think first up, we never want to see the gladiatorial 
element of the race of the person sitting in the car ever removed we don't want to sort of take the gladiator out of the car right but what we do want to do is we want to use the uh, autonomous uh, approach as a supplement to what's done already it's 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 not either or it's both and is what we're kind of get there but what's really stunned us even myself included is how well the cars perform and when we bring people in and they look and they say how is it that there's not a driver in this it's astonishing what can be achieved and so the first up you actually see this is really really super what can be achieved people worry that it'll become boring the great thing about a gladiatorial event is the human factor and people say isn't this going to be boring it's all going to be the same well it's not you see because while the car is programmed to go by a human and it will learn from continuing to drive on the track that dna of the human coder will always be in it so the preference for a risk and the approach to taking an opportunity to pass or not is always back to the human